Jared Poland Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is your I'm about to go to the moon photo news fix this fix is brought to you by Alan's camera and Alan's camera.com now I've been shopping at Alan's camera a mom-and-pop camera store since 1977 what's your name Alan no they've been open since 1977 I haven't been shopping there that long because I wasn't born yet Duh. the reason is simple they've always been fair honest and priced to compete against even the largest corporate stores they win on service if you have a question they have a knowledgeable staff ready and able to help you on the phone or in person the next time you need some new or used gear check out allenscamera.com or call 215-547-2841 and be sure to tell them that the fro sent you. Let's kick off this week's fix with some Sigma lens news. Sigma has officially announced two new interesting art lenses for the Sony E-mount. Wait for it. Wait for it. As well as the E-mount Alliance. The lenses are a 500 5.6 that we have a review out of already, and the first of its kind, a 15 millimeter 1.4 fisheye that we did do a review of that is currently being edited as we speak. Can't you see I'm working here? Yeah, you did hear that right, a 15 millimeter 1.4 fisheye. Now remember last week when I said, if I get my hands on these lenses, I know exactly what I'll shoot. You know where I'm gonna take it? The skate park. Well, I did exactly what I said. I took the 500 1.4 to the zoo as well as to a women's lacrosse game, and I took the fisheye to the art museum and to a skate park. Now let's take a closer look at the 500 5.6. The first thing that you'll notice about it is how tiny, compact, and light that it is. That is really small. That's what she said. It weighs in at only three pounds or 1,365 grams and is only 9.2 inches long. It's the right size. It feels super balanced in your hands and is 100% hand holdable for long periods of time, even if you've got puny arms like Dan. Thanks to the HLA motors, the 505.6 felt like one of the fastest focusing Sigma lenses that I've ever used. Now, mind you, I was on the Sony A1, but I do expect it to focus just as well on all modern E-mount cameras. The biggest question is, is a fixed 505.6 worth $3,000, or would you be better off with something a little more versatile, like a Zoom 50 or 150 to 600 from Sigma? If you want a super sharp, fast focusing, tiny and light fixed 505 100 millimeter for the e-mount then this one is for you now on the flip side what makes the 15 1.4 fisheye unique is that there's no mirrorless fisheye available for sony nikon or canon and on top of that have you ever seen a 1.4 fisheye no now this is a chunker of a lens hey, it weighs in at three pounds as well, or 1,360 grams, but is unique. It captures a 180 degree field of view versus a 14 millimeter that captures roughly a 114 degree field of view. Now, Sigma says that you will get sharp images edge to edge, and they're right. If you're shooting at f8, they're absolutely sharp edge to edge, corner to corner, because at 1.4 with me focused on the art museum stairs, I don't expect the edges to be in focus and, and they're, they're not. Now for those who don't understand the difference between fisheye, circular fisheye and rectilinear, here's all you need to know. This is a fisheye, the edge is bow. This is a circular fisheye, it's clearly a circle and this is rectilinear, meaning the lines are straighter and don't bow. Out at the skate park, the focus was snappy thanks to the HLA motor, which helped me get shots like this, this, and this. Now, if you think this lens is for you, get ready to fork over $2,000. But here's some advice for you fish eye shooters. Use it sparingly. If you take a thousand photos on a shoot, roughly 1% of them should be done with the fish eye. One. Get the shot, then put that bad boy away not to see the light of day until the next time you do a photo shoot. Don't be a fish hole. Or don't like fish as a band, because fish is the worst band ever. Oh no, he did it. Next up, Fuji has released the X106. Not the VI, clearly it's a six. 
For those that don't know, the X100 is a compact cropped sensor camera that takes on retro styling with modern tech and a fixed 35 millimeter equivalent lens. Now, way back in the day, I did purchase an X100 thinking that I would enjoy its stripped down features, but I was wrong and ended up returning it. Let me get my camera off the counter here. Phone call. Oh, I wonder who that could be. Hello? Ah, oh, it's Daniela with Fuji PR. Hi, Daniela. Yeah, long time no talk, that's right. Oh, you want to invite me to review Fuji gear again? Wow, that would be awesome. I can't wait. I look forward to getting this in the mail. Now, the people that have gone all in on the X100 line of cameras, they love it, like this guy. Anyway, here's the specs of the X100. Six. Uh, uh, it sports uh, an all-new 40.2 megapixel X trans sensor that can shoot up to 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter and 11 frames with the mechanical. The autofocus has been improved with the implication, this should say the implementation, damn it, of deep learning via AI. And this is the first X100 camera to include IBIS, incorporating a five axis system. The camera still includes a hybrid viewfinder that is a mix between an EVF as well as an OVF. I will say that's one of the coolest features of this line of cameras. I absolutely love the way that it does it. Like every camera on the market, this camera also lets you capture up to 6.2K video and a bunch of other frame rates that I'm not gonna talk about because this isn't about video. A cool feature that's built in is frame.io that lets you directly upload images to the cloud as you're taking them through an internet connection. Now, if this camera is for you, it comes in at just under $1,600. Will you be getting one? I'll take two. Hey, put me down too, man, I get one. Let me know down below. Hey you, get your I shoot raw shirts at store.fronosphoto.com or you know, right below this video because there's now a store shelf where you can directly buy a shirt. No excuses. And finally, Canon Rumors has shared what it says is Canon's 2024 roadmap and it's stacked. And I don't just mean stacked sensors. They go on to say the Canon plans to announce both the R52 and the R1 at the end of April or early May and have the cameras available for both Euro 2024 in June and the Olympics in July. It makes me want a hot dog real bad. They go on to say that the R1 is currently in the hands of a few photographers, but these hands are currently empty. Now a development announcement sooner rather than later should allow me to get my hands on one and start running it through its paces. Canon Rumors recently tweeted something interesting where they said, we're trying to verify some information, but if what we have been told about the EOS R1 is true, it will push Canon well ahead of the pack technology wise. Now I have no idea what that actually means, but I'm here for it because any tech that allows me to capture images I otherwise wouldn't have captured in the past is something that I absolutely absolutely welcome. Now on the lens front, Canon Rumor says that the next three lenses are confirmed. The 35 1.2, a 28 1.4 or 1.8, which means it's not confirmed because it's either a 1.4 or a 1.8, dumbasses, and a 70 to 200 2.8Z. Now the 70 to 200 2.8Z would pretty much look like a 24 to 105 2.8 if I had to guess, and be internal zooming. The rumors continue on with some cinema cameras, like a renamed C300 and C500 line, both with RF mounts, which the R5C and C70 already have. Now, if half of these rumors are true, I hope they're the camera ones, you know, stills and, and not so much the cinema one, because I don't really care about those as much. Then uh, 2024 might be a huge year for Canon. There you have it, Jared Polin, Photo.com. See ya.